Hi, this is Tim. Let's talk about alias tags. Note this is an excerpt from a live stream, so it is not perfect. Or I'm gonna hit UV soon because this is a little bit confusing. Is now what we wanna do is this was a lot to remember. And so what we wanna do is we're going to, yeah, we're going to make a start stop with output two. So one, we're gonna do this edit online. So I am going to bring down another rung and we can do this right online. You can see there it's got red there and we have lowercase eyes right here. And I tell everybody if it's lowercase, it's not a big deal. Well, actually, yeah, let's put some stuff in here. Then we'll talk about that. But we're going to make a basic start stop circuit. So I've done this in many videos. And so I'm not going to talk deeply through this because right now we really want to hit base tags and alias tags is this is just the basic start stop circuit that's the structure of it so this is typically start this is stop this is your output or your motor and we need to remember or write all this craziness here and i don't want to do that i want to you know i want to make a tag that's called start because that's the advantage of studio 5000 where is over here in 500 we have this structure. We can we can use N7 colon zero. We can use this B3 slash zero slash 10. In Studio 5000, we can make our tags names. We can make them as memorable as our controller name. So I'm gonna make a tag called start. And then actually I'm gonna make a tag here. We're gonna call it stop. And just so we can not get too lost on this, I'm gonna leave this as a base tag of the output so in this case i'm going to make it output two and just i know i could drag that down but just so we can review here i'm going to be looking at local colon one colon o for output i'm going to open it up and there's data and then zero now one thing i didn't talk about there let me do that again because i see some people get stuck here is if we go to local colon o they click here and they're like, well, that's all I can do. And they'll, they'll double click that and they're like, well, now I got a red, I got an error, I can't figure it out. And so what I tell everybody is if you see an arrow like this, click it because there's something underneath it. And now we can see our data. And then as soon as we clicked it, there's an arrow. So a lot of navigating Studio 5000 is figuring out where these arrows are at and when to click them. But okay, now since we can drag it, we're gonna make that exactly the same. But okay, we got red because you remember I just typed start and I just typed stop. And I'm gonna hit the verify button just so we get our errors up here and see it. Hit the verify and it says wrong two XIC operand zero reference tag is undefined. Now just to show you this, I'm gonna click way up here on wrong zeros output. And then I'm gonna click, oops, then I'm gonna click this first error. It highlights that for you. So there's no hunting, there's no scrolling. That's, you know, that's, you know, as far as learning to troubleshoot machines, if you learn never to use your scroll wheel, you're, you'll be really fast. <laughs> so it's learning, you know, the little tools to get to places fast. But right, we need to create this because it is just a tag right now. So I'm gonna right click it and we're gonna have a new tag called start. So I click there and then this is what we would normally do. And this is what UV is asking about, is this base right here? Is this would be a base tag? This is how it normally is done. In fact, let me just create another tag. Let's call this start base. I'm gonna delete this, but just so we see what we normally do. Start base, and we click the create button. And so what we have done, if we go back to our controller tags, and let's close that up, is now we have a tag. In addition to our local things here that we now have our inputs and outputs, we now have start base. And this is going to be just a box, a one or a zero box that we can use somewhere. It's not connected to an input. It's not connected to an output. It's just a basic box. So we can't really do anything with it except for store a one or a zero. But then what UV is asking about is we also have, now one thing, I just did something that I haven't talked about yet. You know, I double clicked over here over my controller tags. As we open things, they make, they make tabs up here. So I can bounce back and forth between these. 
without having to go over here and navigate and find all my craziness again. Because while this is really easy with one main routine, you know, programs get really complicated. Right, I'll take a drink of water, give me just a second. Oh, things looking over there, Amber. Look great. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, so we're going to go back to here, and I'm going to take that base back off of it, because that was just an example. We need a start tag, but we want it to be connected to one of these in crazy input things. So I'm going to right-click it, new start, and then instead of a base tag, we're going to make it an alias tag. And what that means is, is this tag is an assumed name. I mean... If it's, you know, it's Billy the Kid for William H. Bonnie or whatever his real name was. Do we even know what his real name was? Uh, no. uh, you get what I mean. I mean, it's a name that maybe you don't go by. Or even in my case, I mean, my name's Timothy, but nobody calls me that. Uh, you know, I have an alias of Tim, I guess you could say. So what is this an alias for? So now we need to go navigate and find our complicated name that we don't want to type every time. And that's going to be input six in this case. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to go to my data. Now, I did that fast. Let me do it again. As I click here, because, you know, I know I want an input. And every time we see an arrow, we click on it. And then we get to data. And once we click on it, we see another arrow. And we see it, we click on it. And we want input number six. So that is going to make start an alias for input six. So I'm going to create that. And now you notice this looks a little different than the one below it. So here, in fact, let me get off of that. Yeah, come on now. The dark black that you see in Studio 5000, that's your tag name. Anything that you see is gray, it is some type of other information. So in this case, switch one is a description. In this case, it's telling you that, hey, my base tag is local colon one colon I data six. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing for stop. We're gonna right click it, new stop. And then we're going to go and make it input seven. Oops, first we got to make it an alias. And so then we're going to go and we're going to click on I colon one colon, I mean local colon one colon I. And since there's an arrow, we're going to click on it. And there's our data. And then we're going to find number seven. Okay, let me catch up on chat really quick here. Let's see. Okay, you'll be up. We're hopefully hitting your base of alias now. Andrew, glad you think this is great. Welcome. And what do you think about mapping your inputs and outputs instead of aliasing? You know, I will be honest with you. <laughs> I'm sitting here showing you how to do aliasing. I rarely do it. And mainly because, one, that's why we have descriptions. And if I'm troubleshooting this, it's really clear to me that... This is local colon one colon I dot data dot zero. And this is where I need to go look. And when you map them, you make another layer that I've got to go look at. So I really discourage people from doing that. Um, there are some exceptions to that, but on your run of the mill machine, nah, we don't need it. But okay, we got that. Now let's talk a little bit about online edits while we're doing it is Notice that right now we have lowercase i's because the next thing I see people do all the time after that is I just put that in and now they're like, okay, well, local six, it's not working. What's wrong? Well, that lowercase i means, hey, this is just something that you're doing in your PC. This is not a big deal. You can scribble all you want in your PC. You're not actually messing with the PLC here. So now we need to take that edit and we need to get it into the PLC here. Now there's a couple ways to do it. As first we have this finalize all button. And even in, when people are in my training, I don't let them use this button until they can understand what the others do. Because you could really mess some things up royally with this button right here. So first we have this one right here and that says accept pending rung edits. And what that means is take the program edits that you have just made and put them into the PLC, but don't run them. And we can see that when we go to do this, is we're going to hit this button and then pay attention to these eyes when we do it. So we're gonna hit that and now they're capitalized. And I always tell everybody, you know, if you've ever gotten an email from your boss and 
like there's a sentence or a section that everything's capitalized, like they're screaming at you, that's usually something they're serious about. So now that it's capitalized, it's serious. It's in this PLC. Now it's not running yet. And if we look here, we have these green bars right here. And we can see the green bars going through here and then they stop right here. And that means that this is not running right now. So the next button we have is this test button or test accepted program edits. And that means test to try out, <coughs> excuse me. And so when I click it, then what, pay attention to our green right here. Now this wrong is being test in the PLC. So it is running. And now if we click input number six, we're gonna see, hopefully you can see output number two, it comes on. And also even in our program now, we have an indication that output two is now on. So, and too many times I see programs that look exactly like this. It, do not leave your program like this. <laughs> People do, they're like, well, I think that works. Let me come back later. Now you need to make a decision now. Does this work or do we want to back out? And really, if you're not, if you're sure it's going to work, then we need to hit this assemble button. Now, the assemble button means make all this stuff permanent, delete anything we're not using now, and voila. Now we have no letters by it. Now the finalize button, just so we can see that, we start an edit. Now when we start an edit, you notice we get a second copy of it. And I have people all the time, they're like clicking down here, they're like, I can't get anything to change. Well, that's because this is the rung that you're editing. This is the rung that is running. And so this finalize button, what it does is it automates the steps of accepting, testing, and assembling into one button. This is a very dangerous button. You better know for sure you want this because there's no undo button to hit that finalize button. And you saw there for a split second, you could see it run through the different steps, but that's insanely fast. But okay, UV, so now we have start, stop, we have still have local six, local seven, and we have output two. And so now let's go back to our controller tags. In fact, we haven't talked about this yet, is you can right click any tag. And I struggle with some people on this because we got to understand what the tag is. The tag is the black area. So if I right click switch one, this is the menu I get right here. If I right click local, this is the menu I get. And same down here, if I right click start, this is the menu I get. But yeah, if I right click the instruction, this is the menu I get. So this is an instruction, actually go up here to switch one. This is an instruction, this is a tag, this is a description. And they give you different options when you right click them. But I wanna go look at the controller tags of start and I don't wanna do a bunch of scrolling. So we're going to right click start and we are gonna monitor it. And that's gonna actually, well, you can't see me point. Um, let me get off of that. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna take us to this controller tags tab, and it's gonna take us right to the start. All right, so now we actually have a start tag and we have a stop tag. So in this case of switch, oh, I'm sorry, in the case of switch one, Notice we didn't get a switch one tag actually, but in the start case, we actually get a tag down here. So let me open this up so we can see our inputs. And so for input one, we have a description of switch one here, but you notice six and seven don't have input. Down here though, we have a start tag and a stop tag. And so one thing that can be a little confusing when you're looking at this is, okay, how do I know what exactly these are? Well, one, we can always right click it and go to the tag properties and we'll see there, okay, this is an alias for that. Also over here on the edit tag, and I guess they do this, I think Rockwell does this mainly to um, thin down the columns here. You notice we actually have two down here. We have our monitor and we have our editor. And so in this case, we don't have that origin 
column. But if we go to the edit tags, we can see this is an alias for local six. This is an alias for local seven. But okay, let's pay attention. Whoops, wrong one. Let's pay attention to the values that are in these right now. So right now, in fact, let me turn them off. Let's go and look here. Is one of all my switches are off right now. Whoops. All my switches are off right now. And if you notice though, input seven is on. And the reason for that is input seven is a normally closed switch, just so we have a normally closed switch to talk about on this. And if we go over here and we look at our tags, our stop tag, which is that normally closed, has a one in it now. And the stop tag has a zero in it. And so I'm gonna switch input six on. Now we can see input six right here. We can see its value and we can see our start value, both at the same time. And when I switch them, notice they both come on. And same with the stop. If I switch it on, which is gonna make this a zero, if you pay attention to seven and you pay attention to our stop tag, then they both go to zero. All right, Yubi, does that help you um, understand the base tags versus the alias tags? Any questions on that? Click here for our free Allen Bradley PLC lessons. Till next time.